Hi, I'm Andrew Baxter, team lead with mentalhealthliteracy.org. In today's episode of Meet the Psychiatrist, Rachel from our Youth Advisory Committee sits down with Dr. Sparshu to chat about a disorder that's very common but frequently misunderstood, ADHD. Oh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, we've used the chapter feature down below in the playback bar, so if you've got specific questions, you can scroll forward to those. Hi, Dr. Sparshu. So can we start with really understanding ADHD? I was recently diagnosed in early adulthood and I appreciate learning as much as I can. So what is ADHD? Well, before we talk about what ADHD is, why don't we spend just a little bit of time talking about what ADHD isn't. And ADHD is not laziness. It's not caused by bad parenting or a lack of discipline. It's not just being a little bit spacey or forgetful or hyper sometimes, and it's got nothing to do with how smart you are. ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is what we call a neurodevelopmental condition, which means that the brains of people living with ADHD, they grow a little bit differently than the brains of people who don't have ADHD. Mm -hmm. In particular, those areas that are focused on attention, learning, memory, impulse control, and planning. Now, everybody's brain's a little bit different, and everybody living with ADHD is unique. But most people with ADHD have some symptoms that fit within one of three big categories. Predominantly inattentive, predominantly hyperactive and impulsive, or some combination of those two. Hmm. So with those sort of categories of symptoms in mind, how does ADHD affect people? Well, people living with ADHD have a lot of problems with focus, unless it's something that they're very passionate about or very interested in. And then they tend to hyper-focus, sometimes to the exclusion of everything else going on in their life. So things like video games and social media. Well, people with ADHD can spend hours and hours doing those. But then, when it comes time to do those boring day-to-day -day tasks, well, they can wander from one to another, struggling to get them done or forgetting what it was that they even set out to do in the first place. Procrastination, very common problem for people with ADHD. Mm -hmm. They often do their best work at the last minute. Or they may have a million brilliant ideas, but struggle to make any of them actually happen. So frustration is pretty common and underachievement in school and then later in work is something that we see a lot. People with ADHD often struggle with disorganization, distractibility and forgetfulness. And for those living with the hyperactive symptoms, well, they tend to be talkers. They tend to talk a lot, interrupt other people, butt into conversations. They got a lot of energy. They may be very fidgety and restless. And they tend to do things first and think about the consequences later. Almost everybody with ADHD also feels their emotions intensely. And because of that, it can sometimes be difficult for them to control how they're feeling. And once their minds get going, it can be difficult for them to just relax and turn it off. That's especially a problem at nighttime. Now, a lot of people may hear that and think, wow, that sounds like me. Maybe I got ADHD. And there's the potential that they do, but it's important to remember that ADHD is more than just this list of symptoms. It's a chronic developmental issue. It starts in childhood, it impacts multiple aspects of a person's life, and causes them all sorts of problems over time. Okay, so I've heard the terms ADD and ADHD, so what's the difference between those two? There isn't actually a difference between them. ADD, that's just the old name for ADHD. Mm. Now, there's some people who like to say that they've got ADD as a way of explaining to others that mostly what they're struggling with is the inattentive symptoms without too much in the way of hyperactivity and impulsivity. Mm -hmm. But ADHD as a clinical term is made to be this big umbrella that captures everybody with all three of those clusters of symptoms. It's kind of like saying attention deficits and or hyperactivity problems. Mm -hmm. It just is a bit of a mouthful when we say it that way, so we usually just cut it down to ADHD. Um, so how do you diagnose ADHD? 
So when it comes to diagnosing ADHD, nothing beats a good clinical interview. And part of that is taking a family history. ADHD is highly heritable. So it's very common for one or more family members to have been previously diagnosed. It's also not unusual for me to be asking questions and then one of the parents realizes all those things apply to them and they might actually have ADHD and it just was never diagnosed when they were a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important to look for things that increase the risk for ADHD. So if an individual's mom uh, smoked or did drugs or drank alcohol while she was pregnant or if the person was born with a very low birth weight. But honestly, most people with ADHD don't have a history of that. Mm -hmm. What they do have a history of is some combination of those symptoms that we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. and that they've been there throughout their life and they're getting in the way of them being successful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may run some tests, but that's mainly to rule other things out. Like if they've got hearing issues, we may ask them to see a psychologist for additional tests, but that's to look for things like learning disorders or get a better idea of their cognitive profile. So again, nothing beats taking a good history. And one of the things that I like doing is looking at old report cards to get a feel of how they've been doing in school. Mm -hmm. And when I see teacher comments year after year, teacher after teacher, saying things like, very bright but needs to apply themselves, um, would do better to use class time for paying attention to the lesson instead of talking and distracting peers, or constantly loses marks by rushing through work, needs to slow down and check over their assignments before handing them in. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a pretty good indication that the person may have ADHD. Mm -hmm. well, some people are harder to diagnose than others, like girls, for example, can be a bit harder to pick up than boys because they're predominantly inattentive more commonly. So like if we've got two kids and the one kid is bouncing off the walls, talking nonstop, interrupting others, getting into all sorts of mischief, and then mm -hmm. we've got a girl who's kind of quietly sitting there, staring off into space, doodling, getting distracted by the squirrels outside the window. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not hard to guess which one of those the parent or teacher is going to suggest goes and sees a doctor. Yeah, I know that was very much my experience. I was the kid in the back of class not paying attention, reading a book under my desk. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't really struggle academically, it didn't get picked up on as much. Yeah. Yeah, and adults are harder to pick up too. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of adults don't just show up with a parent in tow and a giant stack of report cards. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've got to kind of spell out your symptoms as best you can through what your life experience. And uh, it can be helpful though if you bring somebody with you, like mm -hmm. uh, a partner or somebody who knows you well, to provide that little bit of extra history to make sure you get diagnosed appropriately. Mm -hmm. So. Following that, once you receive a diagnosis, how can you treat ADHD? Well, diagnosis is part of the treatment because mm -hmm. for a lot of people, when they realize that what they've been struggling with is a medical condition, that can be very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need a lot more than just a label. So you gotta work with your team to figure out what's causing you problems and then work together to find solutions for that. And in general, our interventions fall into two big categories. We've got psychosocial interventions and biological interventions. So psychosocial things would be like accommodations at school, um, getting extra time on exams, getting to work in a quiet space with fewer distractions, mm -hmm. or working with a coach or a therapist for things like emotional regulation skills, planning, using memory aids, countering procrastination habits, things like that. Um, it's also important to think about not just what are your challenges and how do we compensate for them, mm -hmm. but what are your strengths and learn to embrace and lean into those. And a mm -hmm. lot of people with ADHD have great untapped strength. So I know a lot of folks with ADHD that are just incredible outside the box thinkers. They ask questions that nobody else would think about. And they're compassionate, and funny, spontaneous and often really creative. Mm -hmm. And then we've got those biological interventions and those are things like medications, but they're also about taking care of your body. 
making sure that you're eating a healthy, well-balanced diet, that you're practicing good sleep habits, and that especially for the people with hyperactive symptoms, they get lots of regular exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so touching on medication, I know that sometimes the first medication or the first dosage doesn't necessarily work for some people. I was very fortunate that my doctor and I only needed to make some minor tweaks, but if not everyone needs medication, why would you risk it? Well, it's important to treat ADHD as fully as possible and as early as possible to give us the best chance of a good outcome. Now it's true that not everybody responds to the first medication and every medication carries the risk of potential side effects. But ADHD medications in general tend to be very safe, even for kids, especially when prescribed appropriately and when monitored by a doctor. Mm -hmm. If we think of ADHD like ropes holding you back from living your best life, well, sometimes those psychosocial interventions we talked about are only enough to get your one arm free. And you can still put up a good fight with one arm tied behind your back, but why go through life that way? Life can be hard, and especially as kids get older and the amount of responsibility and expectation increases, mm -hmm. it's important that we figure out what are our obstacles, what are our frustrations, and remove as many of them as possible. Now, don't get me wrong. People with ADHD, I mean, many of them are very smart and hardworking, but that only takes you so far doesn't matter how smart you are if you never remember to bring your assignments home or you can't get those brilliant thoughts going on in your head down on the piece of paper in an organized and coherent way. Mm -hmm. And being hardworking, there's only so many last minute all-nighters you can pull before it catches up to you. And it's important to recognize that people with untreated ADHD or undertreated ADHD are at a much higher risk of developing other mental health disorders like depression, anxiety, and addiction. And it impacts not just how you do at school or at work, but your personal life. And people with ADHD have a higher risk of things like unplanned pregnancy and traffic accidents. There's a lot at stake, mm -hmm. so it's really important that you consider all of your treatment options carefully. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Sparshu, if you had one thing to say, what would be your takeaway message to kids with ADHD? So for people living with ADHD, I just want to remind them that you're not stupid or lazy or unmotivated or incompetent or whatever else you may have been told over your life or maybe those are some of the things you've told yourself. The truth is, you have a medical condition and it's impacted your brain, in particular, its ability to focus. So just like if you had blurry vision, what you need to do is get a pair of glasses. And for ADHD, there's lots of safe and effective treatment options. Now, they may not always be easy or quick, especially when it comes time to changing some of those things that you've been struggling with for years. But it's worth it so that you don't have to spend the rest of your life squinting. Mm -hmm. And what about for teachers? I honestly believe that every student wants to succeed. Nobody wants to be told that they're underachieving, that they're not living up to their potential, or to be constantly reminded that they're daydreaming or distracted or making careless mistakes. So when you notice that you're saying that to a student over and over again, or putting those comments down on a report card, it may be an opportunity to pause and think about why. It may be a chance to start a conversation with that young person's family that gets them on a path to seeking help. And you can also be a part of the solution by implementing accommodations and learning strategies in your classroom for the students who are struggling with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And then finally, what would be your takeaway to family members or parents? Well, I would say that hope begins with diagnosis. So don't be afraid to reach out for help, to mm -hmm. ask questions, and to advocate for that person that you love. Remember, parents, that ADHD is not caused by parenting. It's a neurodevelopmental disorder. Mm -hmm. But just because it's hardwired in the brain doesn't mean that you're powerless to do anything to change it. You can be an important part of the treatment team. You've got insights about that person that nobody else has. And since you love them, chances are you're going to work hard to make sure that they get 
the best treatment possible. It's important though to take care of yourself through that process because the treatment of ADHD is more of a marathon than a sprint. And we want to make sure that you're there with us at the finish line. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Dr. Sparshu. I definitely learned a lot and wish I'd had some of that information earlier on. It's my pleasure. We have over 100 videos on our YouTube site, so make sure to like and subscribe to be updated about new content. For other information on mental health, come visit us at mentalhealthliteracy.org.